Welcome to PhotoCare's launch event in collaboration with Fujifilm. My name is Manny Tejeda, and I'll be hosting today's event along with Michael, with Fujifilm's very own professional markets training manager, Michael Babenko. During these trying times, we are doing our best to keep you informed and entertained. We really appreciate you tuning into our bite-sized virtual learning series that my colleague, Anthony Festa, has been conducting over the last few weeks. My personal love affair with Fujifilm's X-T line started with the X-T1. I have shot countless weddings with the X-T1, 2, and now the 3. I am actually using the X-T3 as my camera for this event. Ever since Fujifilm entered the mirrorless video space with the X-T2, I have been using them to provide my clients with high quality interviews and brand spots. The X-T3 helped usher in the, the beautiful Eterna film simulation and 4K 60p. I could not imagine what they had in store for us with the X-T4. I'm sure that attendees will have plenty of questions. Please ask them via the Q&A portal throughout today's webinar, and I will answer as many as possible. If there is a question that I cannot answer, I will ask Michael to answer them after this presentation is done. With that being said, please welcome Fujifilm's Michael Babenko. Hey, good, uh, good afternoon, Manny. I almost said good morning because I'm coming to you from Los Angeles. Uh, so I'm looking forward to having a nice lunch when this is over. Um, <laughs> thank you for the very, very kind words about the, the system. And i um, glad to hear that you've been happy using the cameras for years and years. And I'm going to guess that probably most of your participants that are signed on today are already Fujifilm owners as well. And for those of you that aren't, that are looking to make a switch, uh, I'm pretty sure this little baby will be just the ticket you're looking for. So this will take about uh, 40 minutes of me talking. Uh, it's going to be mostly a slide presentation, and I'll go out for some uh, live uh, demos as we go. But I'm now going to start sharing my screen here and go into the presentation. Manny, can you confirm you're seeing my slide? I can confirm. Okay, cool. So here we go. Um, thanks for joining us again. We'll start talking. So the camera, of course, uh, was announced not recently ago. Uh, it's very, very highly anticipated. And why is it not moving? Ah, there we go. <clears throat> it will be available in two kit options. <clears throat> Pardon me. So the body only is going to be $16.99. That's $200 more than the X-T3. So the X-T3 will be doing some comparisons. Uh, but I think you're going to find by the end of this that the extra $200 is actually really, really worth it. Uh, you get a lot of bang for the buck with this. Uh, you'll have two kit option choices when it comes out, <clears throat> or when the kit options come out, which may not be at the same time as the body only. Uh, so you'll be able to get the uh, 1855-28-4 slash kit lens. That's been a really reliable uh, basic kit lens now for uh, many, many years. Uh, for an extra $400, for an extra $500, you'll be able to get the newer XF 16 to 80 F4. Uh, so you'll have two choices with the kit options. So in a nutshell, uh, and again, I'm going to dive in deeper in the next uh, 35 minutes about all this, but uh, these are the highlights of what the X-T4 is bringing to the table. Uh, several new features, some that have not been seen in X-series cameras at all, um, and other stuff that is just improvements on what we've had. So the basic layout of the X-T4, uh, for those of you who are familiar with the X-series, you'll see is extremely familiar, not much different at all. A couple of little things have moved to a different place. Some of the things are more prominent. Some things have been put a little farther out of the way but the overall design has not changed at all, okay? It's still the beautiful design that we've got that people have come to like with the, the knob for the shutter speed, the knob for the ISO, the large exposure compensation knob. Um, but some of the things changed on the ports of the camera, <clears throat> again, excuse me, uh, the ins and outs, um, which I'm gonna talk about in a second. So. There's also the, uh, the what, sort of our drive dial that's up here underneath the ISO has <clears throat> gained a couple of things. It's also lost a couple of things. But on the side of the camera, <clears throat> pardon me, there's something in my throat, is one of the big changes is that we have the 3.5 millimeter input for microphone 
and there's a 2.5 millimeter input for a remote, for any old standard 2.5 millimeter remote. Uh, however, the headphone jack is gone. The headphone jack is gone off the body. So if you want headphone on the camera itself, it'll be by way of the USB-C port. So the camera will come with a USB-C to 3.5 adapter. Um, and then also has the, uh, the continues the micro HDMI out. On the right side of the camera are uh, still dual UHS-2 card slots, SD cards. So again, you can use any regular low cost SD card if you want, but <clears throat> we have been UHS-2 compatible now for years. A lot of manufacturers still have not, but when you're shooting bursts of raw files or you're doing uh, high-end video, you want the fastest card you can get and the UHS-2 absolutely meets that qualification. So they've changed, they're now next to each other. <clears throat> Pardon me, and one of the cool things is they're hot swappable. So you do not have to turn the camera off to pull cards and replace them, okay? That's, an, uh, that's something new. So uh, again, this is sort of an overall uh, uh, layout. We're gonna go in again into this in detail. But uh, probably the big talking point that you should just be aware of is that the T4, the T3, the bodies are very, very, very different, completely different, but they are still the same sensor and the same processor. So it's the same 26.1 megapixel APS-C sensor as the, uh, as the X-T3, the T30, the Pro3 have, um, and the same processor. However, the sucker is really fast. And they did that by adding a lot of additional parallel circuitry and a whole lot of new uh, computational algorithms to make, to pull out the data from the sensor much, much better. Um, it will be available sometime in spring, so it's not that far off. We don't have an exact date as of this time, okay? But it's coming soon. All right. This is a biggie for the T-Series. The T-Series has never had IBIS before. The X-T4 now has in-body image stabilization, and it's phenomenally good. So if you can see on the slide, uh, what they did is they took the uh, IBIS unit out of the X-H1 camera that came out about two years ago. It was the first one that we had that had IBIS in it. They found it a way to make it a lot smaller, a lot lighter, and a lot better than it was in the X-H1. So we now have up to six and a half stops of stabilization. That's for still photography. Uh, there's no way to actually measure IBIS when you're talking video because basically you're shooting all at the same shutter speed about 1 48th of a second. Um, but the point is they managed to slim it down and therefore they made the camera not so big. So along with the change of the IBIS, with adding the IBIS, there's a completely new shutter. So the X-T3 had a shutter assembly that was rated for 150,000 actuations. That was the guarantee. On the X-T4, it's guaranteed for 300,000 actuations. So that's major pro level durability on this, okay? The other really awesome thing about this is it's silky smooth, all right? So it's a lot quieter, and I'll show that to you in a sec. But also, it now will go up to 15 frames a second in mechanical shutter, not electronic shutter, the mechanical shutter, um, which is absolutely state of the art right now in the industry. If you check the specs and everybody else, you'll see where the tops right now for mechanical shutter. Now, we'll still do 20 FPS electronic. We'll actually do up to 30 FPS electronic shutter. But mechanical shutter is really, really a good thing to have now when you're shooting a lot of live events, in particular things like corporate meetings and concerts, because as you know, a lot of ambient lighting now is moving away from hot lights. It's all going to LED lighting. Uh, LED lighting, depending on what the lighting is and depending on your shutter speed, can sometimes cause banding effects. Uh, and it's especially prevalent when there is an LED wall in the background. So you'll see this in corporate presentations a lot. There'll be an LED wall behind a speaker, <clears throat> which is basically like a giant video screen. So with electronic shutter, because of the, the way they, uh, they read out, uh, is you can get banding, which is bad. Mechanical shutter won't do that. So having a really quiet mechanical shutter that can go fast can come to your rescue when sitting and shooting in those situations 
where you may be forced to go to mechanical, but you still don't want to annoy the people around you. So let me show you how quiet this thing really is. Um, I've got a big microphone right here, all right? It's sitting right in front of me. This is an X-T3, is an X-T4. They both have the same 16 millimeter 2.8 lens on there. And uh, they're both set to 1 25th of a second. And both of them are set to continuous high. Now the continuous high uh, for mechanical on the T3 was only 11 FPS. This is gonna be 15 FPS, but you're gonna see what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna hold it right here in the same place, right here down at my chin. I'm just gonna fire and this will be about four inches away from the microphone. I just want you to listen. So here goes X-T3. And I'll do that again. Here comes X-T4, the same position. X-T4, go back to X-T3. Okay, so just even right here, right next to me, that is a hugely dramatically quieter shutter. Uh, now it's like I said, only four inches away from the microphone. I'm doing that so you guys can hear the difference in a dramatic fashion. But if you're several feet away, so if you are shooting at a wedding or you're shooting at a conference or something where people are talking, you don't want to be annoying. Nobody's going to complain about that. Um, so I'm very, very excited about that. <clears throat> uh, there is a new battery and a new battery charger coming. I'm actually more excited about the charger than I am about the battery. So those of you that are current T-Series owners uh, are going to be rolling your eyes and going, oh, no, I got to get a new battery. But look at the spec, okay? It's 50% more battery life, all right? We had to do that. You know, it was just something that was, it was time to upgrade it. So the battery itself isn't a heck of a lot bigger. It's somewhat bigger, um, but it needed to be changed. So the new battery is gonna run $70 and there is a new charger that is a dual charger and the dual charger will have an, uh, an LCD display on it that will give you the percentage, it will let you know when it's fully charged and all that, but it will charge two batteries at once. So <clears throat> the charger does not come with the camera, the charger you have to buy separately. Um, but I'm very, everybody's gonna be very happy about the new extended battery life. So that is definitely an upgrade that's a, a welcome one. There is a new battery grip because the batteries are different. Obviously we could not use the X-T3 battery grip. So for what it's worth, this is it. You can't really tell from looking at it on screen, but the big difference is it's a little bit fatter here in the front because the batteries go in sideways. So the batteries go in up and down. So it had to be made a little fatter to accommodate the slightly wider uh, battery itself. So it will hold two batteries. And then when you have the grip attached to the camera, so you can charge all three by plugging in USB power, USB-C power into the camera. It will charge the batteries in the grip as well. This is uh, different from the other one where you would plug the power into the grip to charge all three. Here you plug the power into the camera, okay? So uh, along with, uh, uh, the, the other thing is that the battery grip does have a headphone jack. So for the higher level users, if you uh, really, really need um, headphone monitoring, but you're going to be shooting like a wedding, you're going to shoot for hours and hours. Uh, so get the grip and then you can have a headphone jack here. But again, to remind you, there will be a USB-C to 3.5 millimeter that will come uh, with the camera it's for on-camera uh, on headphone monitoring. Also, completely new for us is now a, what we call the Variangle LCD. Uh, this is going to probably, hopefully, getting lots of cheers from a lot of people. Uh, there were a lot of things. I really, really like the old design, especially the way that, you know, it would swip, swip, uh, go just simply flip out this way for vertical overhands, vertical underhands. Uh, but a lot of people wanted a front-facing screen, so we do that. We give that to you. So if you can see... I'm going to hold it, get the reflection. So this is, you notice, it's a hard plastic cover on the outside of the screen, okay? So when you want to throw it in your bag, just flip it around, it's protected. So if you, now you just flip it out, there is the LCD. 
So I can rotate this around, put it back, and now it's in the standard configuration. LCD is on the back of the, on the camera. Or I flip it forward, and now it's forward facing. Okay? Forward facing, back facing. So that is a nice new addition. Um, so for those of you especially that are doing uh, vlogging these days and everything like that. So it's a much better LCD. Uh, it's much higher resolution. So it still is a touch panel, of course. So quick summary of some of the features, um, some of the other things that, uh, so the uh, autofocus, even though it's the same sensor, and the same processor by way of very, very clever uh, uh, writing new software for the camera, the sensitivity on the autofocus is down to minus six EV. And again, it's, uh, it's phase detect across the entire sensor, corner to corner. The whole sensor is covered with phase detect, but it's down to minus six EV. That's a three stop improvement over the X-T3. Uh, absolutely virtually blackout free EVF, much faster AF acquisition, um, and then a couple of new things. So some new color additions and stuff coming to you in a couple of slides. So here's another side-by-side -side parallel comparison for those of you that have the T3. Um, like I said, for me, an extra $200 is definitely worth it. Uh, for, for some of you, the T3 might still be perfectly good. Uh, you may not feel that you need to upgrade uh, but there are definitely performance boosts that I think is are well worth it. So one of the things that you're going to find really, really cool, so is, again, much, much better processing algorithms for autofocus. So the next two slides are some short video clips, which I will play, uh, re repeat twice. So let's watch this one first. This is our friend Billy from Fuji, Canada, um, shot a couple of months ago. And so this is a uh, video eye detection. So watch what happens as he rolls the video and watch how it tracks his eye. So you see, there's no audio, don't worry. Follows his eye. Okay, he backs up. Let's, let's see if we can play that again. He turns sideways, looks back to camera, it stays on his eye. He backs up and it stays with his eye. You see how far away he is and you see how small his head is in the frame size and yet it's still on his eye, all right? So very, very good. So let's look at this one. Now this is what are called our wide tracking modes. So this is where the camera will use the entire sensor to track a moving object, whatever's closest to the camera is what it defaults to. So I'm gonna let this play first before I say anything. Again, there's no audio. Moving back and forth. All right, now I'm gonna let you watch that again. Come on, I'm gonna let you watch that again. Now watch, not only do you see him go back and forth, but watch, you notice he goes completely out of frame. And if you notice, the camera will focus on the background because hey, there's nothing in the foreground. And the instant he comes back into frame, it reacquires him. Okay, so let's watch that again. So he's moving back and forth. It's gonna follow him, follows him, no problem. It's gonna go out of frame, goes to the background, boom, goes right back to him. So honestly, I mean, that's really, really impressive autofocus. So, um, so there are some other things now, more menu items and image quality things that we've added. There are now three different choices of white balance. You can decide whether you want it completely neutral or you want it a little bit on the warm side. Uh, there is now a tone adjustment that will give you actually a tone curve on the camera. So it's not just a highlight and shadow adjustment, but it'll actually show you the curve. In-camera raw processing has been updated. So we've had in-camera raw processing on almost all our models now for many, many years. Uh, but this means you're sitting in a coffee house, you've got raw files and you want to play around and, and convert them without having to wait till you get back to your computer. So on the X-T4, you can now do 16-bit TIFFs. You can take the raw file in your camera, create 16-bit TIFF files uh, anywhere you are in location. Um, there's a new HDR mode that is uh, just automatic. You can put it right on HDR in the drive setting. Uh, there's a new battery age menu, which uh, has been in our GFX system 
uh, now for a while. This will actually tell you when the battery itself is about to go bad. Not that it needs recharging, but when the battery needs to be replaced. Uh, some new Q menu options, an AF range limiter, which is really great for street shooting. So you can say, if you're sitting at a cafe on a sidewalk and you only want it to focus, say, three feet to six feet and never farther and never closer, you can set a custom range. And that way it will eliminate any errors of it trying to accidentally focus on something across the street. Uh, that's a really, really easy thing to set up. So let's talk about video. So uh, again, same sensor as the X-T3. Uh, so it does still have full cinema 4K 60p capture, and that's 10-bit internal on the camera. So cinema 4K is a little bit wider aspect ratio. It's 17 by 9 compared to UHD 4K, um, which is 16 by 9. So UHD is what all the TVs that you buy out at Best Buy or Target, whatever. Uh, Cinema 4K is the movie aspect ratio for wider screen. It's about 300 pixels wider. Uh, but again, up to 60p internal on the camera, 10 bit. Um, but this is a really, really cool thing that our uh, designers and engineers came up with. So on the top of the camera, underneath the, uh, underneath the ISO knob, there's the rotating collar, which uh, used to be the metering mode on the X-T3 the T2. Now it is uh, basically the function setting that the, it goes from still to movie. So what we did was we took the T4, we made it two separate cameras in one body. <clears throat> so when you're in the movie mode, you cannot even access any of the still shooting menu items. When you're in the still mode, when you're still shooting, you cannot access the movie menu items at all. It just don't appear. So it's two completely separate memory banks, all right, which is really good for event shooting when you're shooting stills and then you want to grab some movie for some movies and then you want to go back to still, you want to go back to movie, you just put your index finger on here, flip it, and you never need to worry about what your setup is, okay? Your setups remain completely independent so you don't have to freak out you know, is my, what is my white balance? What film sim am I set to? All that kind of stuff, completely separate. You have really peace of mind now when switching back and forth uh, on the fly. So a summary now of the video capture settings. So uh, there are uh, a couple of new things. So one is in HD, the X-T4 will go up to 240 frames per second. So with a 24, uh, 24 FPS playback timeline, that's a 10X slowdown, 240p in camera, okay? That's HD, not 4K, 4K is 60p. Um, there is a new F-log assist function. So that means when you're shooting logarithmic uh, on the camera, uh, you can very quickly, you can assign a function button to give you a Rec 709 film sim look, even though you're recording in F-Log, you can see it on the camera in a film simulation. It defaults to the standard Provia film sim. So even if you're recording external uh, F-Log to a separate recorder, you can still view in camera on uh, in a film sim. So that's good because the F-Log is so soft and muddy and yucky looking. A lot of people have problems with focusing. Uh, by seeing it in a Rec. 709 color corrected F gamma assist, it helps you with focusing um, and also exposure control. And then a few other smaller things, but also I like the bottom on the thing on this slide is now with the two card slots, you can now record video simultaneously to both cards. We didn't have that before. So you now have an internal backup of your cards. So uh, definitely you might want to get yourself some bigger cards, uh, some 64s or some 128s if you're doing long uh, recording sessions. The other thing now is we, I showed you the IBIS, you know, for, uh, for still photography. In video shooting, there is now a digital image stabilization mode, okay? Um, so what this is, is in between, the, the IBIS is actually moving the sensor around physically to compensate for the, the, what the gyroscope detects in your camera, in your, 
uh, handshake and your camera movements, okay? It senses that, moves the sensor, moves the sensor around. Digital image stabilization actually takes the recorded file and then moves the pixels around inside the frame to add an additional level of stability. So in software, some softwares do this and they call it warp stabilization or things like that. So this is good, but, but you do have to crop the picture, okay? So uh, it's a 29% crop when you have DIS turned on uh, in 60p, all right? 10% crop in all the other modes. So it has to be cropped because like I said, it's actually moving the pixels around. So it needs room to be able to do that. So here are some, uh, some videos showing the stabilization modes. So this one is the uh, DIS comparison. So this is uh, with it off. And uh, I don't know if it's a little bit laggy because of uh, the internet uh, connection, you know, uh, have to apologize for that. So if you look at the DIS on, you'll see there's a slight crop to the uh, to the image. There's a side by side here. These are files that came from Tokyo. I didn't shoot these, but you can see it's a bit smoother, right? So the IBIS itself uh, actually works very very well. So let's look at. There's also something called the IS mode boost. <clears throat> This is, not this is not digital image stabilization, so it doesn't crop the picture. Um, but what uh, you have here, although this is with it turned on, but what this is is when you're hand-holding, you're not moving. So this is not a good thing to turn on when you're actually moving the camera. But if you're trying to get an absolute rock solid, almost on the tripod kind of a feeling with a handheld camera, you turn on the boost and it really, really stabilizes the picture. So let's take a look at these videos. So this is really useful if you look sort of at the edge of the frame where the frame, the wood of the mirror part is. So you'll see the change with the IS boost mood up mode, mood IS boost on is it actually just doesn't move at all. It's absolutely rock solid. So that's a really handy thing to have. So uh, just a couple more things and then we'll go to Q and A. So uh, film simulations, um, so you can use the Eterna film sim that we introduced a while back. Now Eterna, just to refresh people's memory, is was the brand name for our very much heralded motion picture film stocks. So uh, unlike consumer film, the motion picture stocks <clears throat> tended to be uh, softer, a little more delicate, and as accurate as possible. Because in the movie world, that's really what they wanted. They wanted accurate, and then they would uh, uh, do things by way of wardrobe and makeup and lighting to get the color palette they wanted. <clears throat> so the Eterna is a really, really sweet, beautiful, nice, accurate film simulation. Well, what we added with the T4 is something new called the bleach bypass. <clears throat> That's the bleach bypass. So bleach bypass was something that came up, I think it was the late 60s. It was pretty popular in the 1970s. It was literally something you had to do in the chemical bath is when you process the negative, you would just skip over what was called the bleach bath in the, in the chemistry. And what that gave you was a very, very unusual combination. And what's unusual is it's really low saturation. However, it's also high contrast. Those two usually do not go together. Usually it's high saturation and high contrast or low saturation and low contrast. So this is a very interesting look. So this is the Eterna film sim, regular Eterna film sim, and this is the bleach bypass. Now, of course, you can do this in post-production, all right? There are bleach bypass lookup tables available uh, on uh, everywhere. But what's cool about this is if you really want this look and you are not a professional color grader, you wanna do this on your own. So you could record F-log to an external recorder, for example, but you could do the bleach bypass, the, the Eterna film sim internally on the camera or vice versa. You could do F-log here, the film sim to an external recorder. And then if you're, if you're totally in love with this and you don't want to do any additional grading, boom, it's done, you're finished, okay? So that's a really, really nice thing. Um, 
So that's all I've got at this point. I'm going to stop my screen share and do you have any questions, Manny? Hey, Michael. Uh, so we had an interesting question. Someone's asking if it's possible to flip the screen out along the vertical axis when the camera is in a small rig cage. So uh, you've, you see me live on the camera. So it flips out, right? So this is forward facing. So what you do is you would face it towards the back. So here's the back of the camera and then you would angle it this way. So here, as you can see, I have it, I have it angled that way. So I can look down on it, I can have it on a 45 degree. The camera would have to be with the hand grip facing up. So there's, if you do it this way, it's facing up either way. So I'm not sure, is that the orientation that they were talking about? But the answer is yes. Now, whether it's in it, when it's in a cage, that's gonna depend on a cage, as to whether the cage is gonna hit this or not and just how far out that's gonna go. But you can at least do 90 and 45 is not an issue at all. Currently, that was the last question. Uh, oh, there you go. Any educational discount program on XT4 and its accessories? Oh, Manny, you know about the educational program. Well, so right now the camera is not out yet. So the camera has yet to ship. Uh, but there is an EDU program that's available through all your dealers. Um, you just have to prove that you're a student and uh, it's something you, you do through your dealer. So it will, won't be any different than any of our other cameras. Uh, all right, so we have a few more now. Uh, let's see, uh, does the camera have Bluetooth broadcast capabilities? Bluetooth, Bluetooth broadcast. Um, I mean, that's a good question. I don't know. So, you know, Bluetooth, if you can connect it to any device by Bluetooth. Oh, so you mean like live, live video streaming, Bluetooth. Uh, I would say the answer is no to that. But we don't have final firmware yet, so I can't, it's possible, but I don't think so. The Bluetooth bandwidth is not that high for image transfer. So uh, by, by way of Wi-Fi, that would be a better way to do it, not by way of Bluetooth. All right. Um, is it compatible with the Ronin S? Uh, I have no idea. That's something that our engineers in Tokyo would be working with uh, DJ, DJI on that. Um, I can only assume by the time it ships, the answer will be yes. But at this point, no way of knowing. All right. So most of the questions right now are about shipping dates, uh, which we cannot confirm at the moment. Like I told you, all I know is sometime soon. Yeah. Um, well, have there been any production delays on the X-T4 due to COVID-19? Well, yeah, <laughs> it was, it was supposed to have been out like already. So, uh, will it, it tie into the old app or there will be a new app? I assume no, the, the, I mean, the remote app, you know, the, the software engineers update as necessary. Uh, it will, it will, it will probably, there will probably be an update to the app. Um, just to make sure the communication is the same. But I mean, it's, we use the same communication protocol for all of our cameras. Um, but uh, I, I don't know if they're gonna redo any of the interface at all. They do change it from time to time, but it will be a minor update. So most of the app updates have to do with the uh, operating system on your phone than they do with the cameras. Waiting for more questions to come in. Uh, is there a master pedestal option in the video on the X-T4? No, no, master pedestal is an old thing. That's, that is, nobody deals with master pedestal anymore. Uh, that is an old broadcast thing that was relevant for SD. Uh, in the world of high def, nobody does any of that anymore. Uh, Larry Busek is asking, is it fully compatible with Capture 120 tethering? <laughs> Uh, it certainly will be, yeah. So again, right now the camera's not out, it's not final firmware, and I'm not aware that uh, C1 has released um, an update that works with it yet, but I know already at this point it, it, for Adobe, so it's already compatible with Adobe Lightroom. So whenever uh, C1 will be out, it will be in time for the camera to come out. The answer is 100% for sure, yes, it will be. Uh, will it have classic negative? Oh, yes. Sorry. 
Mm -hmm. It does have classic negative, yes. Will there be a new set of lenses or can the existing lenses be used? Uh, I can answer There's that. No need to change. Yeah, it's all the existing FC, X, XF, and XC lenses. Yeah, we would never, we, we wouldn't change the lens mount. There's no reason to change the lens mount. There are some new lenses on the horizon. They'll be come out, coming out later this year. Um, but we've already got over 30. I forgot what the exact count. It's like 32 or something. So, yeah, have at it. All right. Um, how many cards can be used? Two. And when in video mode, can you expand the memory by going from one card to the second one? Yeah. So it will it will use any size card you any size SD card you want to throw at it. Uh, the cards are like I said, hot swappable for one. So while you're uh, recording, you could actually pull the card out, put a new one in. Uh, but you can also set up the recording options in the camera to either go to say card number one and then when card number to what's called sequential. So when card number one fills up, it automatically goes to card number two, or you can have it set to record in backup mode, which is recording to both cards at the same time. So it's either or. Are there any plans in the future to release the graphite slash charcoal option? God, I love graphite. I love the graphite charcoal. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Black and silver is anything I've only thing I've heard of. But. Uh, from the looks of it, oh, uh, one of our one of my colleagues, Anthony, just chimed in that uh, Capture One will be releasing an updated version to support the XT4. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So uh, there's no there are no more questions currently. Oh, good. <laughs> Uh, that went faster than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I'm personally excited for this camera. It, Fuji's always been able to cram ev every feature they possibly can without having to making you dive into a menu. That's something that not many camera manufacturers can claim. <laughs> uh, I love that new I, that new dial that goes from movie to still. Yeah. Um, I'm still trying to figure out why guys didn't leave the the IO jack uh, port cover before it was removable. No longer is any uh, insight into that. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I have no idea why they changed that. Oh, but one thing that is removable is actually the uh, SD card door. So, and this has to do with camera. This has to do because of cages. So, a lot of cages, uh, if it's not a custom cage, if it's the kind that wraps around the right side, will block the card door. So, this door actually comes off. But the one on the right side comes off. On the left. There are these little floppy things. Um, I wish they were removable, but they're not. But I have put this on, on rigs, and I found that they really don't get in the way. You can twist them around to any way you want. Uh, but I think you know, a lot of it had to do with weather sealing. So, uh, Ryan asks, will firmware updates update any bitrate functionalities, maybe 422 10-bit in cam? No idea. No idea. So just to address that, and this is not, I'm not uh, looking to pick an argument or something, but 420 is actually phenomenally good. It's phenomenally good. Uh, really, really time that you really want um, 422 is when you're doing really lots of major color corrections. Uh, and with green screen, it's helpful, but I've pulled perfect, perfect green screen keys in 420. And if you go back uh, like a year and a half to the demo film that we made for the X-T3 camera, it's online, it's on YouTube. It's called A Different Beyond. It was shot by Matty Labatik of the ASC, huge big name uh, cinematographer. If you watch that movie, there are blue screens in that, okay? There are composites in that. Well, when we shot that movie, uh, it was really early pre-production firmware uh, on the camera, and we could not get a uh, good HDMI out on that camera at that time. So we recorded everything on that to the internal SD cards, and that was all internal 420, and it was absolutely beautiful, beautiful blue screen pulls on that in 420, and all the action that movie, if you haven't seen it, watch it. You'll see it's motorcycle chases, it's car chases, it's all kinds of stuff, but that's internal 420. The 10-bit 
is more uh, in, more important than the 420-422. I'm sorry, that was a long-winded answer, but whether they can do it or not, I do not know. So That was a great answer. Uh, I had a customer, Ryan, he said uh, to repeat the name of that movie and where can you find it? Uh, so it's got a funny name. It's called A Different Beyond. But I think if you just go to YouTube and just search Fujifilm X-T3 demo movie, um, you'll find it. It's about nine minutes long. So Matty Labatique did Straight Outta Compton. He did uh, the, the latest Star is Born. He did two Iron Mans. He did Iron Man 1, Iron Man 2. This guy is major big time, and he happens to be a Fujifilm user. Um, so he basically did like a nine-minute mini Marvel movie. Don't watch it on your phone because there's a lot of dark. So he pushed the lighting capabilities on that movie. Please watch it on a computer screen because there's a lot of dark scenes in it, which you'll miss on your phone. Uh, but you'll see, you'll see that is a, that is a full blown high tech production. And there's also a really good, like 10 minute behind the scenes showing what we did. We put the camera on cranes, we put it in drones and it's all X-T3, all X-T3 and uh, most of it with uh, X series lenses as well. Samuel's asking if another camera manufacturer just released a firmware update that allows the shutter to close to protect the sensor when the lens is removed. Do you think that's possible with the, the X uh, It's certainly possible whether they're gonna do it or not. Uh, I personally, and this is just a, only from the fact that I've been to a lot, a lot, a lot of trade shows where we're doing cameras across the thing and I've seen what people do when they handle cameras. There's one caveat that I have a worry about that when you take the lens off, so because the flange depth is so shallow, it's only uh, like 16 millimeters from, the, from where the lens mount is to the actual sensor. So when the shutter is closed, it's even closer. It's right there near the surface. What you gotta be really careful of is not to go and stick a finger into that opening when you're holding the camera and trying to swap lenses. Could you jam your finger on the shutter? You've now just, you've now just bent your shutter leaves and now you're looking at a very expensive shutter replacement. So I have not necessarily sure that that's the best idea, my personal opinion. But no, whether we will do it or not, no, I, I don't know. It's a great answer, Michael. Um, do we, someone's asking, can we find any raw images, videos from X-T4 to mess around with? At this point, I'd, I'd be honest with you, I don't remember. You'd go to fujifilmx.com or fujifilm.com and look on our website. I'm sorry, I don't remember if, if Tokyo has posted any images of that or not because, uh, again, it's still we're not necessarily in the, quite the final firmware, so they may not have. Um, now, whether some reviewers posted any of their own work or not, uh, that might be, but. Uh, what is the ISO range again? Uh, so it goes from 160 up to 20, uh, 51,000. That's, that's pretty good. Uh, let's see. Can a person view image development within the LCD screen? Examples similar to astrophotography viewing star trail development? That sounds similar to the feature that was in the XA7. Uh, kind of not sure about what the development, what you mean by development. So I don't know how to answer that. But, um, so if you're holding, doing a long exposure, you actually see the star trail show up in the screen or if you're oh. doing trails of light. Yeah, no, 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 we don't do that. So. All right. So far that has been all the questions. Uh, any you know, nice tidbits you want to share to us about the XT lineup? Um, no. Oh, I had a quick one. Uh, so I noticed with the X-T3, there, there was a negative 30 decibel option. Is that still with the X-T4? Oh, on, uh, on the uh, uh, microphone? Uh, it shouldn't be any different. Let's see. So if you go to external mic adjustment manual, it goes, yep, minus 30. And there's a new line out option, or line in option actually? Oh, uh, yeah. So you can, it's, it's, it's called mic jack setting. And basically that gives you, uh, so microphone, it, it, it adjusts the preamp. 
to expect a different level of input. So mic and line, there's a mic and line setting on here as well. If you are getting audio out from a uh, sound board, like at a live event, you can set it to line input. So that's, uh, that won't distort the, the audio. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so so that, to follow up on Ryan's question about the Astro mode uh, for astrophotography, has, uh, the, K, the Pentax K1 has an Astro mode that uses IBIS. Might that be included in the future? No idea what the engineers are going to come out with in the future. No idea. All right. So that looks like it's all the, that, that's all the answers, and we're going to wrap it up. Um, cool. In closing. Uh, so if anyone has any pre-orders that they want to, you know, send our way to PhotoCare, uh, please send inquiries to sales at photocare.com, sales at photocare.com. Uh, if you'd like any support questions, any uh, Capture One, Fujifilm, anything, uh, how we can help you, please email support at photocare.com, support at photocare.com. We will try to answer as fast as possible. Uh, please visit our PhotoCare event page for more virtual events such as this. We have a few more uh, you know, with Anthony Festa next week and maybe some more dealers down the line or vendors down the line. Uh, thank you, Michael and Fujifilm's North American team for supporting today's webinar and especially spending time with us today. Be <laughs> safe, stay strong, and we'll get through all of this together. We will get through all of this. Remember that. Yep. Take care, New York. <laughs> Thanks, Manny. Take care, Michael. Stay safe. You too.